He has a whole, whole plan to expand and take over the entire country. 전 세계에서 가장 맛있는 소고기는 한우라고 합니다. 미국 일간지 USA Today가 한우를 전 세계 최고의 소고기라고 소개하면서 더욱 관심을 받았는데요. 왜 한국의 한우가 지구상에서 최고의 고기인가라는 제목의 기사에서 한우는 2000년 이상 한국에서 자란 소로 세계에서 가장 오래된 토종소 품종 중 하나이며 살코기와 지방의 완벽한 균형감으로 한국인의 입맛을 사로잡았다고 설명했는데요. 그럼에도 불구하고 국제적으로 덜 알려진 이유는 국내에서 너무 많이 먹어서라고 보도했습니다. 수요는 높지만 공급이 부족해 미국인들은 한우를 먹어볼 기회조차 잡기 어렵다고 말했는데요. 최근 한국인이 인정한 것들을 해외 현지인들이 경험하고 싶어하는 사람들이 늘어나면서 한우에 대한 궁금증이 더해가고 있다고 합니다. 한국에는 한우를 파는 많은 식당들이 있지만 왕실의 소고기 굽는 방식을 이어오는 식당도 있습니다. 1964년 서울 마장동 도축장 부근에서 시작해 현재까지 한우 등심 모든 부위를 골고루 판매하는 식당인데요. 이곳의 창업주 한 할머니는 대한제국의 마지막 황태자 영친왕의 주방상궁인 한상궁으로부터 궁중 음식 솜씨를 전수받았다고 합니다. 그리고 전라도 한평 청정 지역에서 그날 그날 명품 한우를 들여와 궁중식대로 두꺼운 무쇠 주물판 위에 구워 판매하는 것으로 인기를 끌었는데요. 당시에는 가격도 다른 식당과 비슷한 수준으로 특별히 비싸지 않았다고 합니다. 이렇게 궁중 방식 그대로 한우를 구워 많은 반찬 필요 없이 맛있는 김치와 깍두기만으로 승부해온 식당이 미국 LA에도 문을 열었다고 합니다. 역시나 한우 공급이 어려워 미국산 소고기를 사용하고 있는데요. 한국의 맛을 그대로 재현해내기 위해 깍두기와 열무김치, 된장 등 주요 식자재는 꼭 한국에서 직접 공수해온다고 합니다. 그리고 한국 전통 양념을 사용해 육개장과 국밥을 식사 메뉴로 판매하는데요. 한국의 맛을 그대로 전했더니 코로나 사태 속에서도 미국에서 큰 인기를 끌고 있다고 합니다. Korean barbecue is a big deal in Los Angeles and a very exciting new addition. It is all about being the best. It's just a few things. Look at this place. Well known in Korea, they've been open since 1964, so they know what they're doing just a little bit. And the first location outside of Seoul is right here on 6th Street. Eater called it one of the most ambitious openings in 2021. And just as impressive as the space, of course, is the food. It is an experience for sure. We were invited to check it out, and Sam's good friend Janet tagged along. So a few things you might notice, the focus is primarily on ribeye, three cuts, eye, cap, and strip. By the way, certified Angus prime grade beef. That is the highest quality you can get. We started this business in 1964. We only concentrated on the on, on ribeye only, and uh, and we don't have a many banchan like other restaurants. We focus on nice beef. That's one of the owners there. He's kind of a do-it-all-yourself sort of guy. He's got his hands in businesses all over the world across multiple industries, but tonight he is cooking us dinner himself. They fire up the grill, grease up the cast iron with cow kidney fat. That adds like an extra flavor that you can't like get from regular oil or any other fat in, in on the cow. Roast a little garlic. Nice aroma. Garlic. We start with a little soju, which here's a hot tip. For soju, uh, we highly recommend if you're young. We have a Korean traditional way of uh, older uh, people will uh, offer the glass, receive the glass with two hands. That's a proper uh, way of getting the glass. Upper etiquette? Yes. I'm glad I asked. Upper etiquette. <laughs> I wouldn't have known. Youngest. I'm the youngest. Uh, <laughs> then when the grill is hot enough, like hot, hot. 420 uh, Celsius. Is that perfect? Is that the right temperature? No. <laughs> this is an eye from the lip eye. And just like that, it's done. Cut the beef into little pieces with scissors, and then everybody digs in. Eat it right away when it's hot, it's the best flavor of the juice that you get from the steak. That's great. We bring all the different um, sauces or kimchi or pickles from South Korea. They have like a research center in Korea they, that is just thoroughly dedicated to creating new flavors that isn't known before. Speaking of flavors, wash it down with our delicious Korean inspired cocktails. They also have a great wine selection if you want to do the more red wine and beef thing. Everything is good. It is just that simple. And look around. I mean, the challenges of building a place like this are staggering. Imagine opening a restaurant on the other side of the earth, only to, of course, deal with a pandemic. 
COVID hit, so it all had to shut down for a whole year and a half. Yeah. Even now, the restaurant is not at full operating capacity. They can't seat everybody, and it's not because of COVID. Here's the reason, according to the owners. Yeah, right now it is really hard to find out the staff. I think EDD or uh, several benefits from the government. Many people uh, don't, don't want to the work. <laughs> A lot of people are asking, why don't you just like seat us there? It's just that they don't want customer like staff to come in and cook their own meat. We can't sacrifice your experience and quality for just making a bit more money. I really want to hire more people to provide better services and, you know, better, better qualities. All right, continuing with the meal. Up next, the cap, followed by thinly sliced strips and a little table-side magic. Also amazing, cold noodle soup with radish leaf kimchi, a spicy hot beef soup, and maybe more soju. And don't let the very fancy restaurant thing fool you. They are super, super nice and accommodating. A very full meal indeed. Robert says he still thinks about it nightly. And now I know what Robert thinks about nightly. But it's, I cannot tell you how nice they were uh -huh. and how wonderful yeah. and accommodating. I mean, you saw how much food that they brought out for us. It was, mm -hmm. it was a lot. Yeah. It's awesome. It's so good. And at the end of your meal, they also provide you with a little scoop of a homemade ice cream. That's just yeah. oh, the ice cream. Really yeah. good. It's, yeah. it's really, it, it had no dairy in it? or, or It, it was had, all dairy. Made with it was fresh milk. It was only yeah. dairy, yeah. Fresh milk. Yeah, as opposed to... Yeah. It wasn't vegan, plant-based, whatever. It was, he said it, was, it has a different taste because they just use fresh milk and make mm -hmm. it... It's not super sweet. Not super it's sweet. It's mostly just like iced cream, actually. Yeah. yeah. Which Delicious. I think we have an intro for. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a great evening, though. though. Just overall, such a spectacular everyone was so nice the food was spectacular that meat just watching that i'd like want to run out the door and head back there right now it was just an awesome and the soups the both the cold soup and the hot soup both of them were outstanding too i i'm not usually a soup person and i absolutely love them enjoyed mm -hmm. the heck out of them so my friend janet who came with me we've been friends since we were like 12 and 13 years old and she said that her parents um, have heard of it in Korea. Yes. So when she told them she was going to the one in LA, they recognized the name of the restaurant, which I thought was really interesting. And they said that other shops may give you ounces of meat, but include the fat on the meat that they're giving you mm -hmm. as part of the ounces of. They cut all that fat off, get the best kind of cut, which I know you, you described in the package. But she said, just like, just just watch out for that. We make yeah. it, we make it really, you know, if you order six ounces, you're not getting three ounces of fat and just a little bit of meat. They trim all the unnecessary fat, they yeah. say. So if 300 grams, then you're getting 300 grams of meat. He has a whole whole plan to expand and take over the entire country. Yeah. So LA, that's the first LA, first location outside of Korea is in Los Angeles, right. in Koreatown. Yep. And so there's going to be a lot more, but. 해외에서는 한국식 바비큐가 폭발적으로 인기입니다. 외국인들은 이제 식사가 끝나면 당연하게도 디저트로 밥도 볶아 먹습니다. 한국 사람처럼 먹으면 무조건 맛있다는 인식이 자리 잡아가고 있기 때문인데요. 해외에 맛있는 한국 전통 음식이 더 많이 사랑받아 한국의 문화와 역사까지 경험할 수 있기를 기대합니다. 여러분의 소중한 의견을 남겨주세요. 바쁘시더라도 구독과 좋아요 부탁드립니다. 지금까지 단골이시였습니다. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.